All right, good morning. This is your lesson on graphing polynomials. We're going to be taking a look at Glencoe 7-2. Looking at our first example, I'm actually going to take a slightly different approach. I'm also going to need to lower that because I'm not going to be able to reach it. All right, so I have this function x to the fourth plus x to the third minus 4x squared minus 4x, and I'm going to make a table of values. But actually, I'm first going to try to factor to make it a little bit easier because one of the things that I know is factors are going to find my x-intercepts. So I know that I can factor out x from this whole quantity, reducing it x to the third plus x squared minus 4x minus 4. So this factor right here tells me that I'm going to have a 0 at the origin because my root is just going to be 0. Now I'm focusing in on this quantity here, and there are four terms, so actually I'm going to use grouping to factor it. I'm going to pair together the first two and the last two. Looking at my first pair, their common factor is x squared. So I'm going to factor that out, leaving me with an x plus 1. In my second pair, they have a negative 4 in common, so I'm going to factor that out, and when I factor a negative 4 out, I'm over an x plus 1. Remember that the whole purpose of grouping is to find a common factor. They both have this x plus 1. So I'm going to take my x squared and my minus 4, and that's also going to create another factor. So now I've completely factored this polynomial. We've already used our x, so we plot our point. When I set this factor equal to 0, I find that I have another x-intercept at negative 1. I'm going to plot that. Next, I'm going to set this factor equal to 0. I'm going to add 4 to both sides. And then I'm going to take the square root. And whenever I take the square root, I always have a positive or a negative. So the square root of 4, we have a positive or a negative 2. So I'm going to plot a 0 at 2 and plot a 0 at negative 2. Okay? So now, I'm also going to look at its end behavior to figure out where else is it going to go on this function here. So it's going to be a fourth degree polynomial. And notice that my leading coefficient here is a positive, okay? That means it's going to look something like this. My tail ends are both going to point up. So my two spots where I cross the x-axis, I know I'm going to be zooming up straight up top, okay? But now i got to figure out where is it going to end up between all these locations here, okay? So let's plug in a value of, well, between negative 2 and negative 1. If you plug in negative 1.5 to your function, well actually I'm just going to use a table on my calculator. And on my calculator, I'm going to make it go up by 0.5s. And so I find out at negative 1.5, I have a value, so I'm going to make select table. At negative 1.5, I have a y value of negative 1.313. Notice, that's approximately right So now I'm also going to look at a spot between negative 1 and 0. That's approximately going to be negative 0.5. According to my table, that's going to be at 0.9375. Okay. So that is going to be right around here. And notice that I'm just starting to connect the dots as I'm graphing this, okay? All right, so lastly, between 0 and 2, I'm going to plug in an x value of 1. And that's going to get me a y value of negative 6. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Okay? It goes all the way down here. Okay? So here's the shape for my general for my graph. Okay? My general shape here. A few observations for you to notice with this polynomial. His domain is all real numbers. So that's not said in your textbook. But there's not a single x value that you cannot plug in. Now the range. Notice that approximately my lowest value is negative 6, okay? That's approximate. If you actually go into a little bit more detail, you're going to notice that you dip down a little bit further, it's approximately negative 6.6, okay? And so that's located at 1.5, okay? Um, there are ways to calculate the mins and max, the local mins and max on your TI calculator, and I will talk about that in class. So our lowest point is approximately negative 6.6. Okay, I'm going to give it a parenthesis because it's approximate. And we're going to go all the way up, shoot, up, 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 up to positive infinity. Okay? All right.
here's your first graphing function. And I have Miss Sutton just walked into the room. All right, so now we're going to take a look at our second example here. And um, this one's actually a problem where I can't use factoring techniques. And the reason is I don't have um, rational roots for myself to find. And we'll talk more about finding rational roots in the later learning time. So what I'm actually going to do here is I'm going to take my calculator, type in my function, and I'm going to go to the table that my graphing calculator produced for me. And I'm going to write up on my lovely board here an x-y table. So if we start at negative 2, <coughs> that actually gives us a y value of negative 32. At negative 1, we have a y value of negative 7. At 0, we have a y value of 2. At 1, we have a y value of and at 2, we have a y value of negative 4. I actually really like to use my xy tables to figure out what's an appropriate scale on my graph. So here, we don't have to use a 1 to 1, okay? I'm going to let my x values remain the same. They each represent 1. But because I have this giant y value of negative 32, I'm actually going to have each of these squares represent 5 units, okay? So I'll start to label my axes. And I'm only doing this to improve the accuracy, the precision of the graph that I'm producing, okay? Um, please, please, please be aware. You do not have to change it if you don't want to. But when you start to have bigger numbers, like let's say 1,000, which you will, you're definitely going to want to change the axis labels, okay? All right, so now I'm just going to plot some coordinates. So at negative 2, I'm all the way down at negative At negative 1, I'm at negative 7, approximately here. At 0, I am at 2. At 1, I am at 1, so slightly below where I just plotted. And at 2, I'm at negative 4. Alright? Um, looks like I need to go a little bit further with my table. Just by the way, because I'm kind of thinking it looks like a parabola, but I know it's not a parabola, because it's actually going to be to the third power, right? So at 3, I'm at negative 7, at 4, I'm at negative 2, and at 5, I'm at 17. Ah, that's where I was looking for. Um, I do know the end behavior of this one. Because it is a odd degree with a positive leading coefficient, I know it creates this general shape here. Okay? So we start to connect our dots, start to create the general shape, and now I'm going to plot 3 at that negative. 4 is at negative 2, and then 5 is up here at 17. There's that cubic shape I was looking for. Yep, got to have arrows because we are going on and on forever, up and down, and to the left and to the right, which also tells me my domain is all real numbers as well as my range. Because like I just said, we're going on and on forever to the left and to the right, as well as up and down. 